it's a, it's a very big deal. I've heard and I don't take the claim for this, but I, I, um, I completely agree with the statement that it's the end of the beginning. About two years ago, uh, memory, short-term memory issues started to pop up. And then kind of the next level was that maybe uh, a neurologist might be the route to go. So the, the question was, yeah, do I have Alzheimer's or not? You know, he came back after the, an MRI and some other things that, he, that was done. It was clearly decided that it was Alzheimer's. Once I found out, you know, it was that. My, my mother had Alzheimer's. I helped her through um, seven years almost of, of her program. <laughs> So it was, wasn't a fun thing to, to see ahead. The, the drug, it's not a cure, right? Um, we all wish it was. Uh, I think we, 25 years ago, we all hoped that a drug like this would be the cure. That's not really the case, but it significantly slows a patient's decline. The next thing started to move forward <clears throat> about this new drug that was supposedly good for um, where my issue was. It's the first ever um, what we call a disease modifying drug so we've had medicines only a couple actually over the last 25 years that help with symptoms but it's usually very temporary at six months it doesn't change the way the disease moves through the brain uh, this one actually does so this changes it actually removes the buildup of one of the abnormal proteins that we know causes alzheimer's disease it gave me some uh excitement that, that something's coming around the corner. Okay, just relax. Yeah, just like this. So then, uh, hearing that the, the drug was getting further down the road and things were coming closer, and the next piece, the final test, which we, I didn't know what that might be. Uh, and if the score isn't very good, you're not gonna get the drug. The way that it was approved um, by the FDA is that it is for people with what's called mild cognitive impairment, so very early symptomatic patients and early stage clinical dementia who are shown by either a PET scan or a spinal tap to have the accumulation of this protein in the brain. And that's really key. So there are other causes of cognitive impairment and dementia that don't involve this protein, which means this drug won't do anything for you. Somehow, uh, with a lot of help, uh, you know, I scored a very high. Alrighty, sir. Can you tell me your name and your birthday? Leo Stens. I'm excited about it. I wanted to be. Um, Not about me, but uh, the whole thing. That, uh, I kind of felt sorry too for some of the people that didn't make the cut. So, so here we are. <laughs> Walked in here, and they said, "Okay, you're you're the first, Leo. So I'm number one," <laughs> and that taken back on that. This is the first disease modifying drug that we've had and it's taken us a good 25-30 years to move to this point. There's going to be incremental um, advances where we have, you know, we can say you have this protein building up in your brain, we can get rid of it. We have this other protein building up in your brain, we can get rid of it. Mm. So this is the first one, but this is definitely not going to be the last and I think it's really going to be an exponential growth from this point forward.